Hello everyone, my name is Holden Hardman. Thank you so much for joining me again for another video where today my friend Matt is going to watch an animated classic. This was recommended a lot when we did Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It's one that I've been wanting to do for a while and I'm just kind of in the mood for it for today anyway. Today we're watching Prince of Egypt. So this is a really, really great film. I know you saw the box art and were unimpressed, but it is fantastic. I'm really curious to see how you're gonna react to this because you hate musicals. But I wouldn't really consider this a musical so much as I would say that there's just wonderful music throughout. I don't know what constitutes a musical or not. But anyway, you have said before you don't like animated movies. Fair enough. You enjoyed Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Very which good. We, which we were very happy about. We've talked a little bit about religion before. This is the story of Moses. Are you familiar with? This is going to be really telling. <laughs> <laughs> I have a religious background, but it's very minimal in comparison to Holden's. No, I don't know the story behind Moses. No, I don't. So this is going to be educational for you. That is a really good point. I, I actually am looking forward to this part because mm -hmm. I've said it in the past. Like It's not that I dislike religion. I'm, I just haven't been exposed to it that much, to be honest. Matt's knowledge of a lot of things is surface. The story of Moses is like one of the most instrumental stories for the Jewish people, also for Judeo-Christians, Catholics. It is a foundational piece of those religions. It's huge. I am happy to say that the animated film stays pretty dang true to the source material. So if you do take it from like educational standpoint, obviously it's an animated feature of a story. So we can talk about some of the differences, but I really think you're going to relate a lot to it if you're open enough to get past it's animated or there's music playing. It's very impactful for me. It's one of my favorite films. It's probably my favorite animated film of all time. So I really hope that you'll like it. And you'll learn a little bit. We can talk more about the minutia afterwards. You know me, like if there's some sort of educational piece, I'm about it. So I can, de like I can already feel myself putting the animation part aside and being like, teach me. Teach me. It also, from a, an, like an objective point, you don't even have to focus on the religion part. Just the family aspect of like, blood doesn't make you family, that kind of thing. It's gonna hit you pretty hard in certain scenes. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited for that, knowing how you are and how you act to other movies. The music is amazing. It's probably the best interpretation of the story of Moses besides the Ten Commandments. Have you seen the Ten Commandments movie? No build up on this one. Okay, guys, let's get started. My- Nailed it. The Prince of Egypt animated movie. The gods torment me with such reckless, destructive, blasphemous sons. One weak link can break the chain of a mighty dynasty. There definitely won't be a power struggle at some point. He must not allow himself to be led astray. Not even by you, my son. She's Hebrew. Yeah. <laughs> not much of a snake charmer, are you? That's why I... Give that to you. No, no, no. Let's go! As you wish. <laughs> so he's an arrogant ass. Got it. There's some conscience in there. Because oh, Val Kilmer is Moses. Val Kilmer? Yeah, he's Moses. This instantly got better. They never told you? Who never told me what? She's, she's exhausted from the day's work. Uh, not that it was too much. We, we quite enjoyed it, but, but uh, she's confused. <laughs> you are our brother! Now you go too far. You will regret this night. So this is the legit story of Moses. Yeah. With the exception of like there being a song that made him remember. But, but yeah. Get him! That's not a bad <laughs> Oh, my son. They were only slaves. You saw what happened. I just killed a man. We can take care of that. <laughs> oh my god. All I've ever known to be true is a lie. 
go ask the man I once called father. You want to grab a sandwich before you go? Jesus. Nothing in my life worth honoring. Look at your life through heaven's eyes. This is all biblical too. Everything that's about to I appreciate those moments when you said that, bro. This is the burning bush. It was engulfed in flame, but it was not burning. It's like the fire was not hurting the plant. Wait, is this the land of the milk and honey bar? No. Okay. Here I am. Take the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you stand is holy ground. Who are you? I am that I am. Okay, I'm taking these off. <laughs> I have seen the oppression of my people in Egypt, so I have come down to deliver them out of slavery and bring them to a good land. A land flowing with milk and honey. I shall send you. Moses also had a stutter. Don't believe me, I won't even listen. You've chosen the wrong messenger. How, how can I even speak to these people? Who made that power? Did not I? Now go! In the Bible, was it sort of depicted the same way where God was like, I made you. Yeah, like he said, oh, that's pretty rad. You know I am a Hebrew. And the God of the Hebrews came to me. He commands that you let his people go. Behold, the power of God. I do not know this God. I'm just trying to do as God told me. God? When did God start caring about any of us? I did not see because I did not wish to see. Or you didn't see because you didn't wish to see. Ah! Ready? Let's part the sea! Not quite. Not Damn it! <laughs> Turn it into wine. That's what you this is not wine. Sorry. Blood! It is only beginning. You can take away your food, your home, your freedom. But there is one thing he cannot take away from you. Your faith. Believe, for we will see God's wonders. That's dope. Yeah. It was ten plagues? Yeah, ten plagues of Egypt. I love it that God has this, like, no, I'm gonna throw some torment towards your way to make this happen. I love that. Like, there's the consequences. Yeah. I hoped I would find you here. Get out! Because no kingdom should be made on the backs of slaves. Oh my God! Take a lamb, and with its blood, mark the lintel and posts of every door. So if you got blood on the door, the plague won't hit you. Right. right. Moses has repeatedly been like, if, oh. if you keep doing this, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At what point do you break? Oh, wow. Done. You... And your people have my permission to go. What? Many nights we've prayed with no proof anyone could hear. There can be miracles. This makes me actually very interested to read the Bible. That's pretty dope. Let's go. <laughs> So like you said, Jesus really was the bridge to being like, yeah, Jewish people are great, but like all these people. We have a Bible school out here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning so much. The Bible and like religion is a legitimate study. All right, we just got done with the Prince of Egypt. We had a long like discussion after the fact, talking about religion, talking about Christianity, Hebrews, you know, all that stuff. Trying to get back into the mindset of Prince of Egypt. One of my favorite animated movies. Something that they really focused down on that was not really biblical was 
the relationship between Moses and Pharaoh. It makes sense from the movie standpoint that they would have that relationship, but it was like a creative liberty aspect to it. I mean, I think in the Ten Commandments, they displayed him as just being like the Pharaoh, or I don't even know if they had like a father-son relationship or whatever, but it, it would make sense. And I think at least for this movie, it creates more of a sense of tension that not only am I trying to go do this already difficult thing, but there's a personal relational aspect to it that um, I found very, very convicting. Jenna, you had not seen this before. What did you think? I thought it was a really good movie. I didn't think I would like it for some reason. It being animated, they were able to depict some things that they couldn't as well or maybe differently than like say in the Ten Commandments movie. This is definitely a 90s animation. It had all the feels of like Aladdin and Lion King and all of those together. I really enjoyed it. It was, I think, a movie that people who don't have a religious background can understand as just a surface, just a storytelling. But people who do believe the Bible and believe the story can really have that more of a depth of appreciation for it. So I thought it was good. Pastor, as someone who does have uh, biblical knowledge uh, and seeing Prince of Egypt again, what do you think about it? This was one of those movies that I had to have in the collection. Uh, it's it's a very stylistic interpretation. Like you said, all of the creative liberties, I think none of them took away from the core story. I think it was advertised as such in the very beginning, saying that it doesn't take away anything from the core story. Uh, and it, I don't think it does. A lot of it made a lot of sense. The uh, relationship between Pharaoh and, and Moses was, I think, really important for people who aren't biblically I don't want to say inclined, but inclined. yeah. For people that don't like follow the Bible or are religious, I think it's a it bridges that. It gives you the tension, like you said. It just gives you what to hold on to that further tells what actually was written in the Bible. I really think the music made the movie a blockbuster or any kind of adjective that puts it higher than any other random film. It definitely deserves any award, all the Academy Awards and everything it was nominated for. I think it should have won all of it. This is one of the best animated movies just from that that I have ever seen. And it's definitely something that I want to show my kids just as a great piece of film history, really. I mean, there's not much to say about it. It's just all good things from here. I really like the creative stylistic choices, the way they did like the Angel of Death during Passover, how they depicted that, how they animated that, I, th I think is really fantastic. There are a lot of like purist type of Christians, like fundamentalist purists that like, if the Bible did not explicitly say a vortex opened up in the sky and this white thing, then they don't like that. So I appreciate that they stayed true to the story, to the source material, but they also, I mean, how do you depict the angel of death? You know, I think that they did a good job. I like seeing different depictions. This is one of the most debated stories of all time, whether this even happened or not from like a historical perspective. Some people will try to argue that do believe, but don't believe how they try to make it so that each plague led to the next plague, like the, the Nile turning into blood or some type of chemical. I've heard that it could have been a chemical reaction that made it turn red, but it's like a natural phenomenon, which would have made the frogs come ashore, which would have made the locusts come. I've heard all that type of stuff before. One common misconception that a lot of people have is that the slaves built the pyramids, like the Hebrew slaves built the pyramids. That's not biblical. I don't know why people really think that. I guess because the amount of Hebrews that would have been there and they see how big the pyramids are, trying to put two and two together. But biblically speaking, Hebrews never built the pyramids. It would have, it would have been master Egyptian builders. Fun little tidbit for you. One thing based off what you said, the, the plagues being really stylized and stuff. One thing I felt in this movie is the fact that the ninth plague was the darkness plague. For me, it was like the separation point where like, first nine plagues were terrible, but it's, it doesn't compare to what's coming. And the darkness was kind of like a fade to black moment where it's like you have one last chance. And we all know what happens in the 10th, you know, when the 10th plague comes. So this movie po pointed that out to me as kind of like a wake up moment. Uh, maybe it's because I have kids of my own now. I don't know if you saw it in the video. I get chills during that scene. Uh, it's because it just puts all, all of it in perspective. Whether you're religious or not, anyone with kids or anyone with loved ones really on earth, you know, you can value the, the severity of like losing them. Somebody tells you if you do this, you're going to lose someone, part of you is going to think about it, regardless of whether you're religious or not. So that, that was just a very strong moment for me. I also forget how short this movie is. It's only an hour and 15 minutes. It felt like a normal length movie, though, just watching it. The, the music is fantastic. The, the part with the plagues coming up and Moses and Pharaoh, like, let my people go. I will not let your people go. Super awesome. I can do miracles. The You know, they're finally leaving and you just... I like that the movie is also just very blatant about how prayer and faith can feel like sometimes. I mean, she's even like... One of the songs, she says something along the lines of, you know, we've been praying all this time with no proof that anyone can hear. I think that's something for any religious person that has prayed or prays regularly. Sometimes you feel like your prayers aren't being heard. And I think that that's a relatable and shouldn't be shamed. I think that that's important. Anyway, Matt, as someone who 
has no biblical knowledge and uh, doesn't like animated films and doesn't like musicals. What did you think about The Prince of Egypt? You know, I gotta tell you, after watching this, I just feel 10 times more cultured, like I know what the <laughs> hell's going on in life. In all seriousness, my religious background is almost embarrassing. Not necessarily for the fact that like, I'm not up on the times with what everybody else believes in, but because I simply just don't have perspective. What it really boils down to with me, I've realized, especially after getting to know Jenna and Holden and you, Pastor, I really have such a little amount of knowledge of religion that it seems like in my life, I said this during the movie, that it seems like in my life I almost had to intentionally avoid religion. That's how little I know. I think as a kid, you go through, you know, childhood and pick up the story of Moses and who was on the boat? Noah. Ark, like Noah's Ark and all that. Like, you know, like Evan Almighty is like the closest thing that I know about Noah's Ark. Again, I say all that to say my knowledge about religion is so minimal, but I'm also a very open-minded person and I do have the beauty of being able to go into this without any sort of bias of being like, no, it's not Methodist, so I'm not, you know, <laughs> like I, I don't care, like it, it's fine with me. So I went into this with such an open mind and just really wanting to learn from what this story really had to say. Because I've heard bits and pieces throughout my life but never really given it the time of day. Having said that, I think this is an incredible movie. Objectively, w regardless of what your religion is, you can take so much from this movie and apply it to your life. Throughout the entire movie, I was leaning over and asking Holden like some of the biblical pieces so I could make those connections. And you did a really good job at giving me the pieces that you knew my dumb ass wouldn't know. Like <laughs> that word in Hebrew means this, that really helps. So I appreciate that. I think that at times we sort of balance this of like, don't tell Matt too much, but then like he needs to know those pieces. So you did a really good job. I appreciate that. First, I gotta say for the main character, what was his name? Moses. Moses. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We got so we went so far down the rabbit hole talking about the passion of the Christ and all that I forgot. It would suck to be born into royalty. It would really, really suck. It would really be awful. I hear you. The greatest gift that he received was really, all right, first, you know, getting sent down the river in the, in the cooler. That was big. But I think really his greatest gift was being given that switch in perspective. To me, this whole thing boils down to your perspective. He thought his life was just this royalty. He's just this conceited, arrogant guy in royalty. But like he realizes, no, you're really born of what this society felt was of lower. And like this shifted his, his perspective that eventually led to the freeing of a people, which is huge. Again, please put away your, your beliefs and all of that just for a split second to understand the objective quality that is this movie. He said, I've done nothing in my life of honoring. Can you imagine that feeling of being like, my life means nothing. <laughs> like, that's a, what a terrible feeling that must have felt like. I can imagine his self-confidence was probably in the toilet. So for him to rise above and to lead these people is something that is huge. It is is really really huge I think there's so much that is so relatable in this I loved that this God figure was harsh had the ability to show that stern side I think that myself at least I know that when I look at the Bible and whatnot and religion it's very like passive and you know we forgive and and all of that but that side is not shed light on very much because of my lack of knowledge. So whenever he was like, uh, who am I to go talk to these people? And then you said like he, uh, Moses had a speech impediment that adds to it. Like who am I to speak to these people? And how God was like, yo, go do it. I made you, you're basically insulting me by saying I can't do it. Like go do it. That right there, I think you can make your own collection and be like, have the confidence to go do something. There's so much relatability to this. Really, really big moment. He can't take your faith. He can take your son, he can take your daughter, he can take everything, but he can't take your faith. That is so true. True. That applies to now. You can lose your home, you can lose your family, you can lose everything. But whatever your faith is, and it doesn't have to be faith of religion, it can be faith in yourself, whatever. Nobody can take that from you. That's very, very powerful. Bygone gym moment, holy crap. No kingdom should be built on the backs of slaves. I think the relatability to that, because I mean, you don't have a kingdom, you don't have slaves. I think what that means is like stepping on people to get to where you want to be is not the way to get there. I hope that makes sense. Again, regardless of your religion, I really think looking at this objectively, there's so much value you can draw from it. I 
think this is a fantastic movie. This is something I would watch again. I can't believe I'm saying that because it was a musical. I think they really did a great job. The slavery is also, there's a perspective to that. Uh, no kingdom could be made on the backs of slaves. So like if you're a slave to something yourself, you're not going to be able to proceed. You're not going to be able to clearly see the goal because you're a slave to whatever you're being a slave to. It's just so many meanings behind that. I mean, it's the best line in the movie, really. And I think that a lot of us can relate to it just from a human side of things. It's not really the religious part, point, you know, because we all have our own way of looking at life at times. And sometimes that's just not the way we should do it. We should look at all angles of something before we decide to tackle it. So I think that's a very good, very good line and a very good thing to live by. As a person of faith myself, I really try to walk a fine line between y'all know that I am without also trying to proselytize. Like, so when are you going to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? I felt that division in you talking today. It was good. I don't shy away from it, but I, I do have this feeling of, about what kind of Americanized Christianity has become is the way I, I interpret it. It's become so much more about just telling people and less about how you tell them. I will listen to you. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Matthew 6, 5. Shut up, oh, I'm talking okay. now. I'm kidding. <laughs> That's why I um, have gone after like the, the most corrupt church in Pensacola. That's why I have my God in the MCU series. As a person of faith, there's a lot that I, I relate to very strongly with stories like Moses and the element of, does God even hear me? These m moments of doubt that Christians don't like to talk about because we never want to break the faith. When the reality is like, yeah, I have wonders sometimes or am I wasting my time or whatever. I think that that's healthy because at the end of the day, no matter how, where I've been in life, I've always come back to, I believe, I just do. We were talking about that in our little post discussion before the discussion that like, I think that every bit of this boils down to faith. You could present the most ironclad fact, 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 fact from the Bible. But at the end of the day, it's my decision of going into that with faith. And I think that's important to you. And, and it's important to you. I try to be a very rational and open-minded person. I, I try to be very, like admit my faults. And when I don't know things or when I'm presented with new information, I'll change my position. I feel like I'm good at, at that, I think. You are, you are. All that to say, uh, it's a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a very, very good movie. And, and uh, I like how, you know, it ends with them crossing the Red Sea. And they show a little bit of him getting the Ten Commandments. But there's a lot that happened between that and a lot that happens after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, read your Bibles, kids. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I do appreciate about this movie is that they didn't get bogged down in the whole story of Moses. They picked one specific piece that they could really go into detail and not have people just glaze over and not understand because there's so many details in the whole story of Moses. So I like how they kind of alluded to the rest of the story at the very end, but they really stuck to this one piece of his story to really do a good storytelling and not have just so much in one movie. Okay, Pastor, what would you rate Prince of Egypt? Bro, honestly speaking, I'm not trying to brown nose or anything. This is an easy one. It's definitely a 10 for me. It checks off all the boxes. I could watch it again. I definitely would recommend it to anybody, not just a certain demographic. The music, we've covered it a thousand times. It's superb in the movie. Everything that went into making it, it seemed like the actors, the musicians, the director, every, everyone involved had a goal. And like Jenna said, it could have been named the Ten Commandments, but it wasn't about the Ten Commandments. It was about the Prince of Egypt and Moses himself. So yeah, it's hard not to give it a 10 for me. Jenna, now, what about you? This is a hard one for me because I thought it was great storytelling, but I don't think that I would watch it in my free time. I give it an eight. For me, I would probably give this probably about a nine out of 10. Like you said, rewatchability. I still listen to the freaking soundtrack from time to time. If I need some deliver us, if I need some of that. I really like how they emphasize the relationship between Moses and Ramses, which was not in the Bible, technically speaking, but makes a lot of sense. Matt, what would you rate the Prince of Egypt? You know, I now find myself justifying the numerical value I put on this. Like if I give it a certain number, in my head, I have to realize what are the reasons that it didn't make this or why is it not lower? How would you define my religion, Holden, knowing me how you know me? I would consider you to be probably more agnostic. You're open, not convinced. I like that. I like that. I guess I'd have to give this a nine. You know, I think I said earlier I would rewatch this. I agree with you, Jenna. I definitely wouldn't watch it by myself. But if y'all are like, let's watch it again. I know that there would be even more stuff that I would get, gain from it. This feels like something that the more you watch it, the more you're going to get from it. Maybe my only disconnect from it is not knowing all of the pieces. And I don't think that's the movie's fault, but I think that's just where I am in my life. Like, Endgame, I mean, I, that was a 10 because I knew the buildup and all that. So I hope that makes sense yeah. why I gave it that numerical value. The Bible is a compilation of books, is essentially what it is, with this being the second book of the Bible. So I understand, like, they, they referenced Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which yeah, yeah. was before Moses. Hugely instrumental in sure. Christianity, Judaism, and in Islam. All three trace their roots back to Abraham in the Bible, which was only referenced briefly, which are uh, the three biggest religions on earth. 
We'll get there, man. Uh, dead. So, <laughs> yeah, yes. So, uh, I understand what you're saying, though. That's why I think the movie did a really good job of uh, singling out a specific story with still the emphasis on, on Moses and on God. I'd be really curious to see what you thought. I'm trying to think of like a good New Testament like movie, specifically around Jesus. There's like the Son of God, the Passion, but the Passion is kind of after the fact. It's the story of the crucifixion and the resurrection. I don't know. We'll get to it. We might get burned out with religion and stuff. Somebody was like, uh, Holden, when did, when I started doing God in the MCU, they were like, Holden, when did your channel become a religion channel? And I want to be like, when did it become a, a reaction channel? <laughs> Uh, most of my videos are not reaction, but they are now. If you enjoyed this video, leave me a like. Helps my channel out a lot. Comment down below letting me know what you think of the Prince of Egypt, what you think of religion. I know a lot of you don't like it. I know you, a lot of you don't like that I like it. So let me know what you think. Subscribe if you want to see more fun content like this. Matt and Pastor's channel will be in the description below. Not Jenna's. Consider joining me on Patreon. It's a great way to get early access to select videos like this one. As always, I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Hope you enjoyed this one-off. Take care.